Dear disciples of Jesus, grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus. Amen. The Gospel is inviting us this week to live with the knowledge that God is coming in the most unexpected time to us. The second coming of the Lord has always been a challenge topic for theologians and ministers. Because people always ask, when is this world ending? When is Jesus coming back? Jesus answered to this question saying, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. So the unexpected hour is the most important hour in the Christian teaching about the end of times. When is Jesus coming back? The answer should always be, he is coming back at an unexpected hour. And what is an unexpected hour? Well, it has to do with something that you don't think is taking place now or tomorrow. Something that is not scheduled. Something that is not part of the program. The unexpected has to do with the surprise the non-evident, the non-scheduled in our daily routine. Jesus is coming and according to our plans? No, he is coming back according to his plans. He is not scheduled according to our time, but according to his divine time. So how important is the kingdom of God for your life daily? How fundamental is to learn and practice the word of God daily? How deep is your prayer life daily? Jesus says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus calls our attention to find how important it is to be coherent with our faith daily. Jesus wants us to understand the importance of building our life on the solid ground of his person and teachings. He is the cornerstone. We need to live as citizens of the kingdom, grounded on the living cornerstone that is Jesus, if we want to really manifest the power of God acting in our life. That is why Jesus said, be dressed for action and have your lamp lit. Be ready all the time. Be dressed for action with the Christian tunic of our baptism. Be dressed with the knowledge of our salvation in Christ. Be dressed with the love and power of the Holy Spirit. Be ready. Be alert. Live as today could be the day when Christ comes back. This is the feeling of imminence that Jesus wants that we impress for life. We need to live as a living mark of the presence of the living God that is always coming to the world in an imminent moment to the point that millions of followers are alerted, waiting for the fulfillment of God's promises permanently. This is the source of a great blessing, according to Jesus. He says to his disciples for this reason, Blessed are those slaves who the Master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them to sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. It's the Lord who will serve his slaves, not the slaves who will serve the Lord. What an incredible reversal of what the world teaches. What a complete reversal to what the Roman society was imposing in, in its time. In a world ruled for powerful and rich autocrats, Jesus says that the fulfillment of the kingdom is the beautiful hour when the Lord will serve the table for his servants. It's not the Lord who will come, who we will serve. It is the Lord who is coming to set the table and serve his slaves, his children, and his disciples. What a beautiful image that the gospel is depicting for us today. The Lord of the creation is coming to serve a table for his disciples. But we, his disciples, need to be ready for this unexpected coming. 
We need to be ready serving the others today. We need to be ready praying for the other today. We need to be ready loving our neighbors with the powerful and grateful love of God that is able to break difference and heal brokenness. Yes, our world is broken. We are experiencing that brokenness daily. The world is divided, there are wars, tyrannies, sufferings, plagues, hungers, droughts, fires, dangers in all places. And there is a lot of anxiety about the future and about where are we going with all this brokenness and how we will end. There are many reasons today, like in the past, to be afraid of. But listen again what the Lord says to us in the Gospel. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes, we are God's little flock. Jesus' little flock. We are the few, the poor ones, the vulnerable ones, the needy ones. Yes, we don't have the power to overcome all the plagues and illnesses that are hurting the world today. We don't have the resources to solve our financial crisis. We don't have the physical power to move the big mountains that are blocking our journey. But we have Jesus. We have the Lord of life. We have at our side the presence of the Creator of the whole universe. We have the living Word of God the word that heals, forgives, restores, changes hearts, and transforms lives. It is in the power of Jesus that we are marching convinced that the end, the victory, is ours. Because it is the Lord's victory, and this is the Lord's church. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes, do not be afraid. God knows what we need. God knows what our deficiencies are. God knows what our brokenness is. God knows what our tribulations are. God knows our sins. God knows our repentance. God knows our ups and go. God knows our downs. God knows us better than we know ourselves. And yes, God loves us so much that even though we have all these limitations and frailties, God has decided to give us the kingdom. So it is time to always live as citizens of the kingdom of God, always ready, always alert, always prepared to serve, always praying, always giving testimony of power of Jesus, always inviting others to receive the good news of Jesus, always congregating to worship the Lord together, always serving our neighbors, thinking that we are serving Jesus present in them too. Live as citizens of the kingdom, live in the amazing grace of God, and preaching this amazing love of God, the love that this broken world urgently needs to know and remember, live as citizens of the kingdom, always remembering the admonition of the Lord to the whole world. Where is your treasure is, there is your heart. May Jesus be your treasure. May the kingdom be your destination. May the love of God be your blessing, your faith in Christ, your banner, and your love serving others, the manifestation of the love of God to all the world. May you always be ready for the unexpected hour of Jesus. May you always be ready to declare the good news and bring more people to God's kingdom. Glory be to God always in the church, in the world, and in your life, and in your love. Amen.